Mr. Douglas Roderick, President Coordinator of the United Nations in Indonesia and Representative of the Secretary General of the United, of the United, United Nations. Mr. Samir Bakker, Assistant Secretary General for Palest Palestinian Affairs Organization of Islamic Cooperation. Mr. Dizra Perkaya, Vice Chairman of the Committee on the Exercise of Inalienable Rights of the Palestinian People. Excellencies, colleagues, friends, guests, representative of friendly countries, civil society representatives, representatives of the media. <coughs> Allow me to start by thanking the United Nations Committee on the Exercise of the Inalienable Rights of the Palestinian People and the Organization of Islamic Cooperation for organizing this important event on Jerusalem. We must act with the resolve to ensure that what we are addressing here in our statements translates into intensified political, diplomatic, and financial support by the United Nations and the OSC and their members. Allow me as well to thank Indonesia for hosting this event as yet another manifestation of its constant support to the Palestinian cause. Jerusalem is the beating heart of the Holy Land. It is the cornerstone of our identity and our future. War starts in Jerusalem and peace starts by Jerusalem. And Jerusalem its holy sites, its millenary history are under attack. Palestinians in the city are subject to continuous aggression through forcible transfer, colonization, home demolitions, provocation of residency cards. We want time and time again that the provocations of Israeli settlers and occupation forces against Muslims and Christians holy sites, notably Israeli actions aiming at dividing Al-Haram Sharif temporarily and spatially, thus undermining the historic status quo, will inevitably spark a new escalation. Now Israel, the occupying power, is attempting to blame us for a fire it has ignited. It takes about incitement, it talks about incitement and refuses to acknowledge that it is its occupation under all its manifestations that has led to this predictable outcome. Since 1948 till today, Israel has chosen the path of illegal acquisition of land by force. Annexation, colonization, forcible transfer, and displacement of the indigenous population. But despite all its attempts, the struggle and steadfastness of our people and the international support to our cause have preserved us from extension. Palestinians continue struggling to fulfill their inalienable rights, including their right to self-determination. They struggle acre by acre, home by home, to defend their land from a colonial enterprise that continue unabated under the eyes of the international community. Al-Kurd, Qawasme, Abu Jamal, Sublaban, 
and so many other Palestinian families have gone through the ordeal of receiving demolition orders and watching bulldozers destroy what they worked so hard to build and then being asked to pay for the, for the destruction of their own homes. Our inalienable rights are enshrined in international law, reaffirmed by countless UN resolutions, confirmed by the ICJ advisory opinion of, nine, of 2004. And yet, the world has failed to activate the existing mechanisms of protection and accountability that are so direly needed in Palestine. Protection and accountability. Palestine remains the greatest test for the international system as a whole. A test the world cannot afford to fail. International law is crystal clear in the case of Palestine and Jerusalem. United Nations Security Council resolutions have condemned the annexation of East Jerusalem and all policies aiming at altering the political, legal, demographic, social, and cultural status of the city. There is not a single body of the UN which has not expressed itself on the same matter. Not a single body. From the General Assembly to the Human Rights Council, from fact-finding missions to special reporters, from UNESCO to OCHA, all have clearly indicated the illegal nature of the Israeli policies and laws. And then, resolutions and reports are not designed to describe realities, but to trigger action, to trigger action. What are the states waiting for? Jerusalem is besieged from within and without by illegal settlements, wall, bypass, bypass roads, checkpoints, military outposts, etc., etc. This segregation creates daily suffering for Palestinians, from Silwan to Shu'fat, from Sheikh Jarrah to the Old City. Israeli occupation forces and settlers are spreading violence and fear in total impunity and immunity. Our families are being burned. Our youth are being murdered in the streets. How many Muhammad Abu Khdir and, and, and Ali Dawabshe do we need till the world starts worrying about our own security? What are states waiting for? It is the responsibility of states both within the relevant multilateral fora and bilaterally not to render aid or assistance to these illegal acts, these war crimes and crimes against humanity. Furthermore, states and international institutions have a duty to act to ensure respect of international law and thus to end Israeli impunity because by allowing Israel to be above the law, one has allowed it to act as an outlaw. States must also act immediately to put an end to settlers' terrorism by considering settlers' organizations criminal and terrorist organizations with all what this decision holds of political, legal, and financial implications. The rapid deterioration we are witnessing on the ground is a direct consequence 
of the international communities in action. Israel is losing time and gaining, and gaining ground. We should not allow it to continue doing either. The United Nations Security Council must adopt a resolution clearly stating its support for ending occupation within a clear and limited time frame so as to achieve a two-state solution based on 1967 borders, including as regards Jerusalem, and its intention to monitor progress and hold accountable those who are impeding this prospect. States must prohibit any ties between their governments, their entities, their companies, and their citizens with the occupation and notably the settlement regime. This includes refusing to hold meetings with settlers, including Israeli government officials and members of Knesset who are settlers. Prohibiting their companies from being involved in the occupation and banning settlement products. Banning settlement products. States must also link their relations with Israel, the occupying power, to its respect of the inalienable rights of the Palestinian people and other relevant rules of international law. What are the states waiting for? In Jerusalem, all Palestinians are a target. Children are being arrested on a daily basis. Parliamentarians are deported out of the city. And Palestinian institutions are kept closed despite repeated international calls for their reopening. The attack against Palestinian presence in the city has reached our homes, our religious sites, our schools, and even the curriculum. The situation in Jerusalem is a terrible reflection of the situation throughout the occupied state of Palestine, where there is no shelter or safe heaven anywhere. The Gaza Strip and the 1.8 million Palestinians living in it remain under siege after success, uh, successive criminal Israeli aggressions in the last eight years. Since early October, over 120 Palestinians have been killed, including over 25 children. Around 3,000 have been wounded, and over 2,000 have been arrested, including 400 children. Israel holds hostage not only the living, but also the bodies of our martyrs in one of the most horrific acts of collective punishment conducted against Palestinian families. Israel has kept our in entire nation hostage for seven decades. It was able to hold hostage peace by counting on an international involvement limited to calling for bilateral negotiations between a colonial occupying power determined to pursue its colonization and the occupied people who want to fulfill their inalienable rights, including their right to self-determination. Our freedom is non-negotiable. Our freedom is non-negotiable. Our statehood is non-negotiable. States have not only a right, but a duty to recognize the state of Palestine on 1967 borders, and this includes East Jerusalem. They have a duty to uphold the 1967 borders and not undermine them. They have a duty to act before there is nothing left to salvage. The regional context and the money and the many tragedies that surround us do not make the Palestinian cause less relevant 
but all the more pressing. Freedom in Palestine, justice in Palestine, justice for Palestine, and peace for all can trigger a positive wave across the region and beyond. Jerusalem is a symbol. Today it stands as a testimony to double standards, to injustice, to racism, and to apartheid. Let us, all, let us allow, allow it to be what it was destined to be, an open and shared city of peace, tolerant and for pluralism. Finally, every state, every entity, every organization, every individual has a choice either to be complicit with the occupation through action or inaction, or to act for freedom and peace, one being indispensable to reach the other. Those meeting here today have made their choice. They decided to defend the holiest of lands and the most sacred cause the cause of justice. Thank you very much.